It's September 13th, 2015. We're at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. With 13 seconds left, the New York Giants hold a six-point lead over the hometown Cowboys. Dallas has the ball at New York's 11. Decent position to steal this one with a touchdown. But for both sides, tonight's more than just a season opener. It's a chance to rid themselves of past demons, answer long, lingering questions, and quiet the doubters, at least for a week. So, let's rewind. First things first, tonight's an interesting one for Dallas. If we look around the field, their story remains tied to two guys who aren't out here, Dez and DeMarco. While the early careers of Des Bryant and DeMarco Murray were slowed by injury, in 2013, this duo took control of Dallas' offense. Murray became the franchise's first 1,000-yard rusher since Julius Jones in 06. Dez's second straight 1,200-plus yard season sent the receiver to his first Pro Bowl, alongside Murray. They became a firework-producing one-two punch that Dallas had longed for. Despite that, the Cowboys became synonymous with mediocrity. Looking to change that 500 tune, Dallas turned to the intriguing 2014 NFL Draft. Jerry Jones, the Cowboys head honcho slash Palpatine impersonator, loves to make a splash. And the biggest splash in the draft, despite his size, was Johnny Manziel, the quarterback who seemed guaranteed to be franchise-altering in one direction or the other. This pair made a lot of sense. So when Manziel happened to be available with the Cowboys on the clock, Dallas pulled the trigger and took an offensive lineman. Huh. Jerry? What gives? Well, his son, the Cowboys vice president, allegedly physically prevented Jerry from turning in a card with Manziel's name on it. There was, after all, another train of thought regarding Manziel but best by former Cowboys head coach Barry Switzer. Now, maybe the Cowboys didn't feel that strongly, but in drafting Zach Martin, they signaled what the offense needed more, to win in the trenches. Martin slotted into a starting five with Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, Doug Free, and Ronald Leary, and holy shit did they do work in 2014. That offensive line bought more time to air it out, which helped Dez set a new franchise record for touchdown catches during another monster year. But the biggest beneficiary of the Maulers up front was DeMarco. Murray became unstoppable. He broke records on a league level, then even more impressively surpassed Emmitt Smith for most single season rushing yards in franchise history. Most importantly though, that translated into a 12 win season. Hey, way to go guys. That's awesome, one successful season. That ended in heartbreak. Divisional round at Green Bay. Things were going well for Dallas, but the football gods spat on our duo. Murray fumbled at a key moment in the third, which helped fuel a Packers comeback. And when Dez had a shot at playing the hero, despite these feet being inbounds and this looking a lot like a football move, that's not a catch. And if you think it is, well, the support group meets on Tuesdays. Alas, Green Bay held on and the Cowboys entered a pivotal offseason with a terrible taste in their mouth. DeMarco and Dez's record-breaking seasons came during contract years. Dallas slapped the franchise tag on Bryant, keeping him around for at least another year and buying time to extend his future, but that also meant less money available for a potential Murray contract. Jerry spoke about wanting DeMarco to be a career cowboy, but also pointed out that boy is that salary cap tricky to work around. Their initial offer for Murray left a lot to be desired for the young runner that just finished third in league MVP voting. And unfortunately for Cowboys Nation, Murray definitely got what he desired from the division rival Eagles. While that stung, Dallas placed its bet on their offensive line. If you listen to head coach Jason Garrett, the thing that's better than one great runner is a handful of guys just trying their best. Which is commendable, but hard to feel inspired by the likes of Joseph Randall, a reclamation project and Darren McFadden, Kristen Michael, or Lance Dunbar. And Lance, you know I love you, but you get it. Despite the team swearing the ship had no leaks, 2015 expectations for Dallas were mixed. 
Sure, they reasonably could repeat as division champs, but convincingly, hard to say. Dallas did at least get Dez locked in long term, but after skipping much of the offseason program while getting that contract sorted, tonight, Dez missed time in the first half with cramping, then came down hard on his foot in the second half, which sent him to the locker room and right here, boy could Dallas use him. I mean, it's great for New York though, and if nothing changes here but the clock hitting zero, they'll have a strong start to answering some of the questions looming over this team. How much longer will Tom Coughlin be coaching the Giants? What about general manager Jerry Reese? Does Eli Manning have any magic left in him? It feels like a very long time since this trio helped the Giants win two Super Bowls in five years. I suppose in football years, it has been a long time. Since Lombardi number two, New York hasn't returned to the playoffs, slowly getting worse. Are any of those guys squarely to blame? No. The shortcomings weren't the fault of one individual, really. Maybe God if you're into that sort of thing. But injuries have prevented this team from even knowing where its potential lay. In 2013 and 14, Football Outsiders calculated the Giants as the team most affected by injury each year in the entire league, and frankly, it wasn't close. Their offensive line took major hits, which meant Eli took even more major hits. The guys he leaned on to catch balls couldn't stay on the field. The running backs used a revolving door to get onto the field but kept getting their limbs caught in said door. Now, despite the headlines, the doom and gloom media coverage, and everything I've said up to this point, not everything was bad. First off, they drafted Odell Beckham Jr. in 2014, and he has lived up to the hype. 1,300 yards in just 12 games as a rookie. It happened to be against Dallas that he delivered an immediately iconic, physics-defying spectacle that all the PI in the world couldn't prevent. And it becomes even more unbelievable in full speed. Flag, Beckham, catch a one-handed catch. How in the world? Oh my goodness. Second, OBJ's talent didn't get wasted as it would have been by offensive coordinators past. Ben McAdoo joined the team and installed his version of a West Coast offense. Odell surely helped, but that new system seemed to benefit Eli most once the early kinks worked themselves out. And lastly, on the other side of the ball, Steve Spagnuolo returned, architect of that devastating Super Bowl defense that derailed the Patriots' nearly unbeaten season. Could he work his magic all over again? Who cares? At least this team no longer relied on Kevin Gilbride and Perry Fuel. Surely things can't get worse. Oh. Well, that's a new one. Jason Pierre-Paul's highly unfortunate injury brought storm clouds right back over this organization. With his future in doubt, the Giants don't really have any other pass rush options. It serves as a bizarre final piece to an already confusing puzzle leading up to this 2015 season. Their expectations seemed like a shotgun blast of potential records. Sure, they could compete for the division, but they also could flame out in a way that seals the fate of one of their leaders. Well, not Eli. He's safe as of a couple days ago. But all of that is why their showdown in Dallas is more than just a season opener. It's a franchise tone setter, a potential signal for whether the new faces can pull this off or if the old ones gotta go. Okay, so you're probably wondering if all that is true, how do they have this lead? Glad you asked. The Giants do deserve credit for how the game has gone, but really, Dallas has thrown this one away. The Cowboys opened tonight with an absurd 17-play drive that killed 10 and a half minutes of clock, covered 79 yards, and earned them three points. The Giants' offense only mustered a pair of field goals in the first half, but that Spagnolo defense outdid them with a fumble return for a score. Dallas turned things around, found the end zone halfway through the third, but they also gave the Giants a one-yard field following an interception. New York's offense has been pretty abysmal, but honestly, they haven't needed to be all that great tonight. Yes, right here, all of these guys are surely thinking it would have been nice had they not settled for so many field goals. Still, the Giants' defense has a golden opportunity. 
One important note on this score bug, Dallas is out of timeouts. If New York stops them inbounds, that could be game. A walk-off defensive stand. To do that, they need to keep an eye on these two. Tony Romo and Jason Witten. In 2003, Witten and Romo entered the NFL. Dallas drafted the tight end in the third round, then snagged the quarterback in the undrafted free agent frenzy that followed. Soon after, they met for the first time on the way to rookie minicamp. And in the years since, they've proven inseparable, on and off the football field. By the time Romo took over as Dallas' starting quarterback in 2006, Witten had established himself as a versatile, tough-to-bring-down, complete tight end. And thus, Romo had his favorite weapon. They combined for iconic moments, like this absurdity where we all got much more familiar with what Jason looks like behind his face mask. But becoming a face of the Dallas Cowboys brings a downside. Everything done or said has an amplified spotlight, whether it's who you date or when you offer a quote that ultimately is a very great outlook on life, it's just not what's expected from the QB of this franchise, thanks to those stoic, love nothing more than the game faces that came before Romo. For Tony in particular, the narrative ultimately became that the Cowboys were expected to compete for the Super Bowl if he's under center. If they didn't get there, then he received the blame, ignoring that said championship talk wouldn't exist in the first place without him. Losses were often placed on his shoulders, sometimes from a gunslinger moment where he admittedly tried to do too much. It's just those two distracted from his success in the clutch throughout his career. And his security blanket has been there the whole way, putting together a career that should see him in Canton. Their prolific connection means in any crunch time situation, it's a safe bet where Romo's gonna be looking. So tonight, when Dallas faced a 10 point deficit and eight minutes left, Romo looked to Witten to get the drive going, then found him again to cap it all off and cut New York's lead to three. But the Giants offense came alive at the perfect time. They strung together their longest drive of the game, marching to the Cowboys four yard line. But first down, can't get in. Second down, stuffed. However, they did force Dallas to burn their final two timeouts. That meant right here, whether they score or not, New York could burn some clock. And that's exactly why Eli instead did this. Rolling under pressure, he has to throw that one out of the- Please, please, pl okay, yes, there's the Eli face we love. New York settled for a field goal from Dallas's one yard line, which, did force Dallas to need more than a field goal of their own, but a Giants touchdown or just another 40 seconds run off the clock could have iced this game. Instead, Dallas had a minute and a half to score. They started with some big gains by Dunbar, then Romo hit Witten for 13, Terrence Williams for 8, and just like that, a minute 16 later, landed on New York's 11 yard line. Right here. This game could have broken wide open in either direction. Each team has made their share of mistakes, but never enough to kill hope in this moment. For Dallas, the hope is they've finally assembled a team that's complete enough to compete when it matters most. That others can step up to do what hasn't been done in nearly 20 years. With New York, if they hang on here, it can be the start they needed to find stability. The faces leading them haven't changed, but this season will show whether that's good or bad. And for 9 and 82, tonight marks their 13th year together. It's the first step towards changing their legacies. And it's a chance to maybe do their thing once again. Welcome to a moment in history. All the pressure on the left side, he drops the ball, throws, caught, Witten! Touchdown! Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to us on YouTube where you'll get all sorts of videos to enjoy, such as these options right here on this screen, which when you click, your computer will use some black magic to send you to a whole new page with a whole new video just for you. Go on, try it. I dare you.